Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Fikernerd.com, now Fikernerd from Studies. So today we're going to be starting a brand new chapter or a poem in English literature, the one and only Bangal Sellers by Sarojini Naidu. So when we are doing this chapter, this is chapter 3 by the way, on page number 14 if you're wondering and if you have the treasure trove book. Again, I am just coming along with an image instead of my own textbook because it's not in the best condition. I've written too much <laughs> because I want to cover every single thing when I teach you all and I hope you actually like the video as well, okay? Now, one thing to note about this chapter is before we study that Sarojni Naidu wrote this uh, basic poem back in the day as in really, really long time, as in before the independence of India. When in India, there was a very racist, racist community uh, not that I'm criticizing India in any way, shape or form, but India had a very uh, racist community that time, as in people wanted only boys as their uh, child and they didn't want a uh, daughter, they didn't allow daughters to study, they always uh, basically kept them in the kitchen and you know helped them uh, used to make them do the household stuff and that's what uh, they were meant for so just keep that in mind and there, there may be a few oh, what do you say a few lines and stand lines and stanzas that are a little racist and they don't exactly mean the best so don't mind that this was totally it was made before independence so that's why that kind of language is used, all right? Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the video. And starting off with the first paragraph, let me rub this ugly bangle sellers that I've written. <laughs> okay, let's start, okay? Bangle sellers are we who bear, our shining loads to the temple fair. Who will buy these delicate, bright, rainbow tinted circles of light? Lustrous tokens of radiant lives for happy daughters and happy wives so so the poem starts off with a bang right it starts off with a bang and it's and uh, the poet over here is saying bangle sellers are who we bear as in Bangle sellers have the ro load of bangles on their head and they have this very, very heavy load on their head that they're cal carrying. And that's why they're saying bangle sellers are who we bear, as in the load that we are bearing on our head are those of bangles. Our shining loads to the temple fair. So the bangle sellers, they with, they, with this uh, heavy load, go to the temple fair and these uh, what do you say these bangles are referred to as shining loads as in shining bangles lustrous shining bangles and they are being taken to the temple fair so over here the temple fair now this is a very smart uh, business strategy that the bangle sellers are using over here why the temple fair so temple fair because as we just read, they're taking this uh, load away to the fair, which is taken to a place in front of a temple. Now, because the bangle seller thinks his best business will be, will be done over there. Why? Because a lot of women, young children, all of them will come. Just outside the temple, they will see a whole stall of bangles. Of course, the first thing that we'll see, that they will see are bangles. So they will get attracted and most of the crowd will be there in the temple. Right? So of course, when they see the bangles, the business will be done most over there. So you can write this down, like just underline it and uh, write why. If you get a question as a shining glow to the temple fair, why at the temple fair? Just because over there, the business will be done the best right who will buy these delicate bright rainbow tinted circles of light okay underline the word rainbow tinted circles of light okay 
So the bangle sellers now are asking a question to the readers. Who will buy these delicate bride? Why delicate? Because it's very delicate. It can break any time. And also bride because, of course, it's shiny. It has a lot of color. It's attractive. And that's what also attracts all the women that are that have come and exited the temple as we just saw so rainbow tinted circles of light now rainbow rainbow is we all know it is multicolored it's multicolored colors that we see in the sky and the rainbow tinted circles of light so rainbow tinted basically it also represents so one thing to note is that in Sarojini Naidu's poems it may seem like a very simple poem you know just talking about bangles hey what a simple poem but actually there is a lot of deeper meaning meaning so when I say to underline something do underline it because uh, whenever you have questions like this when you talk about the deeper meaning meaning why am I saying meaning? Sorry. When you talk about the deeper meaning, it will definitely get you extra marks and uh, not extra marks as in it will just make the invigilator, not invigilator, sorry, the examiner think that yes, that this student is well prepared and this student has prepared uh, everything very well, basically, right? So rainbow tinted over here is referring to the bangle sellers. Why? Now the bangle sellers are, if, if you know, if you've ever been to an actual local market in India, you must have seen, you know, different ma bangle sellers uh, or, you know, just any, any business, not businessmen or any, uh, just uh, people who are trying to sell their stuff on a local market. They scream extremely loud, right? For example, wait, let me just like move my mic away when I scream. <laughs> yeah, okay. So you must have seen whenever you go to a local market, the bangle sellers or any sellers, they just say, yes, yes, come here, take this, take that. And they scream at the top of their lungs just as I did. I, I mean, what I said right now wasn't even like one fourth of what they said, imagine. So they scream extremely, extremely loud. And uh, this rainbow tinted circles basically refers to the bangle sellers being scattered all over. And they're scattering colors of bangles through their voices in all directions to attract women customers or even male customers who are buying the bangles for uh, their wives or their daughter or uh, yes, basically like that, right? So the rainbow tinted, rainbow, they're multicolored colors, right? Rainbow is nothing but multicolored. It has many, many colors. Like the rainbow, what does it look like? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and then purple. So this is what a typical rainbow looks like, right? So just like that, the bangle sellers with all these multicolored, these rainbow tinted circles of light, this color scatters all over the market. And how does the, how do the bangle sellers scatter them? By using their voices, right? Their voice is their tool. So if I am standing in East and the bangle seller is in the West, the bangle seller screams so, so loud that the scatter, it's, it's basically the rainbow tinted colors, like the bangle colors, they just scatter by the bangle sellers when they use their mouth and it is going in all directions and this attracts customers, okay? Circles of light. So underline this, I'll come back. For now, circle as in a bangle is circle in shape, so just that circle. But there is a deeper meaning behind that, so I'll come back to it, okay? Lustrous tokens of radiant lights. Lustrous, why? Because it is glossy, radiant uh, of happy lights, right? Uh, and uh, lustrous tokens of radiant life. So basically, the brightness passes off their uh, happy life, as in the brightness of the bangles. And uh, it just basically represents, you know, yes, I have a ha happy life. I have like lustrous tokens of radiant and happy lives, basically. For happy daughters and happy wives. So these lustrous tokens of radiant lives are given to happy daughters and happy wives. Radiant as in happy, so of course it will be happy daughters and happy wives. Okay. Now let's go on to the deeper meaning in this paragraph or this stanza. So the first stanza talks about the bangle seller, how they scatter the light of rainbow out to everyone in the fair, right? Using their voice. Now this is strategic uh, planning as we see, and this is a very good marketing planning that the bangle sellers use, fine. Coming to the second 
deeper meaning so i i said right underline circles of light so circle is not only because a bangle is circle in shape it actually represents the circle of a woman's life we all know that we when we have to say why life is a complete re- revolution we say life is a complete circle right we you you take birth first then you go on to being a toddler then a child then you uh, become a teenager then you become an adult then you become a young adult or then you become a ne- then you become a young adult then you become an adult you get married and then you come in your middle age sex sector you probably give birth to your son daughter anyone at all and then you become old and then you die so life is a complete circle and circles of light basically they're not only by shape but these circles of bangles they almost represent a complete circle of a woman's life they represent circles and the whole revolution of woman's life now you'll know why you know why why i'm saying the circle represents a complete circle and revolution of a woman's life you will get to know why now it just seems like a raw sentence a raw analogy but it will become perfectly understandable once we go through the a complete poem so let's go on to the second stanza now some are met or some are meet for the maiden's wrist so now over here in the first stanza we are done talking about the mangle sellers now let's see who are the type of people and the colors that each person takes so first we talk about the maiden wrist so some are fit so some bangles are fit for a maiden's wrist maiden is basically an unmarried woman okay or a young a young adult or just a young woman in general so some are fit for a unmarried wrist as a maiden's wrist silver and blue as the mountains mist so the bangles are silver blue as the mountains mist mountains mist is what color white and blue so underline this mountains mist over here let's underline this okay silver and blue is the mountains mist and what color is the mountains mist it is blue and white so the colors that the bangle sellers keeps for the maidens are silver blue and white now some are flushed like buds that dream some are flushed like buds that dream as in some bangles are pink and light red like buds buds as in flower buds so some bangles are pink and light red like flower buds and as in they're completely glowing bangles that are pink they're light they're red so we are adding red over here too like a light like a baby pink or a a, a light red like a blush color right like flower buds buds that dream so we know that a young flower in its bud stage is basically known as a flower that is not bloomed yet similarly over here we are comparing buds to a maiden an unmarried woman buds that dream so maiden maidens are compared to buds and they're basically uh, being called as made buds that dream as in maiden a maiden an unmarried woman that is dreaming to be married in their future life right so maiden dreaming to grow old not old as in be married and become a woman right on the tranquil 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 however you want to pronounce it bro of a woodland stream okay on the tranquil bro of a woodland stream tranquil as in a calm bro, bro as in the topmost of a woodland stream so over here you can just see like an imaginary imagery is happening over here we're talking about how the bangles are being related to you know like a calm a place at the topmost uh, area of the woodland stream like a very very quiet sound and you know early age of your life 
some are aglow with the bloom that cleaves as in some are glowing with the bloom that cleaves they're glowing as in the flower is yet to bloom but it's trying to bloom and that's what you call as like an unmarried person's life so it's some are glowing with the bloom that cleaves to the implied glory of newborn leaves newborn as in very innocent fragile and in this case if you're referring newborn leaves to maiden it is still not a woman okay and all the colors you know silver blue uh, red light red blush white all of these are basically colors that the bangle sellers keeps for the maidens the bangle seller has saved for the maidens okay now let's go on to a little more uh, what do you say a deeper meaning in the second stanza so in in an indian society okay in an indian society in hindu religion Uh, bangles have a very important culture they have an they have an important culture and religion's importance uh, religious importance in a woman's life right different colored bangles are worn by women at different stages of life and blue silver and green are used by maidens and basically a bud that we saw right some are flushed like the buds that dream buds represent innocence so when we were talking about that a circle is like a complete circle right and the circle of a bangle represents a complete circle the revolution that a woman goes through in her complete life so the first stage the whole revolution of a circle the first stage that the woman is reaching is the maiden stage and the types of bangles and the colors represent the stage the woman is in so in this case we're talking about blue silver and green green by newborn leaves right so it is green so these colors are referring to bangles that are meant for the maiden that have just started their life not started their life as in just born but they're unmarried okay so what happens in the next stage of life in this circle of bangle in the circle of life this revolution of a woman what is next being married right so with this we move on to the third stanza some are fields of sunlit corn meet for a bride on her bridal morn some like the flame of her marriage fire or rich with the hue of her heart's desire tinkling luminous tender and clear like her bridal laughter and bridal tear so some are fields like uh, sunlit corn so over here the we are going to the next stage that is the bridal stage when you are getting married from a maiden you, you you are a full grown woman now that is getting married and over here the bangles are being described as sunlit corn as in a very very golden and you know happy why because this represents two things happy of course because it's get you're getting married and second that uh, in a wedding golden is used as you know golden jewelry and everything and that's why when we say sunlit corn golden as in you can say golden represents the golden jewelry that women wear uh, on their wedding because when it's a special day we actually wear you know real gold and all of that right so some are like the fields of sunlit corn as in golden and happy meet for a bride on a on her bridal morn morn as in morning so meet for a bride on her bridal morning some like the flame of her marriage fire so underline this line some like the flame of her marriage fire so this means two things first when we refer to the line as a bangle we say that the bangle is one more color that we are talking about over here is golden red and yellow like a marriage fire second meaning we are talking about in the case of marriage is like the flame of a marriage fire so in a typical indian wedding the bride and the groom take vows and certain promises going around a uh, going around the circle in a fire like a smoke like the fire that is there and it is called as the marriage fire that they take vows around like seven vows and seven promises for life so some like the flame of a marriage fire so just like the flame the fire that the bride and groom goes around the bride also wears 
bangles of same colors like red, yellow, and until now we have seen three colors: red, yellow, golden. Okay, or rich with the hue of her heart's desire, as in joy because of marriage. Heart's desire basically talks about underline this. Heart's desire basically talks about. Heart's uh, heart's desire basically talks about uh, she the joy that she has. Her heart is happy because she's getting married. She's finally a woman now, right? So this is what it talks about. Next line: tinkling, luminous, tender, and clear. So this is a very clear line. Just talking about how the bangles are. They are tinkling, as in as in the case of sounds. Luminous in the case of glowing. tender in the case of fragile because it can break right and clear in the case of transparent like a bridal laughter and bridal tear so bangles are kind of you know they're they're supporters supporting women in each stage of life in this case in the bridal stage ba- bangles represent with stage of life a woman is in and that's what the whole poem represents as well right similarly yellow and golden are considered apt a uh, lot of uh, apt for a bride and a lot of gold you know a uh, lot of gold as in i'm very sorry what, what am i saying i'm very very sorry right i'll just repeat it yellow and golden are considered apt for a bride representing the flame of marriage as i said so the marriage fire that is there you know yellow golden all of these they represent the flame of marriage fire and uh, that fire is that passion of a newly wed couple a newly wed bride that has just gotten married and is ready to start a new chapter of her life right so that flame of a marriage it almost represents the passion that a newly bred no sorry newly wed bride has and uh, a newly wed wed bride that is ready to start her new life right like her bridal laughter and bridal tears so underline this line and let me tell you the now let me tell you the deeper meaning behind this stanza so the last line like we see over here conveys the transition of a woman from a maiden to a bride from a maiden to a bride from her bridal laughter she just became a woman so she's crying not crying sorry she's laughing she's extremely happy becoming a woman you know from a maiden turning into a woman right but then when she is done with her marriage and she's married now she's like a complete bride a complete finished bride not finished bride finished bride as in she's gotten married now she's a newly wed so b- bridal tear when she is leaving her house and she is leaving her parents so she cries so you can almost see the transition from a maiden to a bride with all emotions being attached in a single line as we see over here got it hope you all understood that moving on to the last and final one so what is the next stage in a woman's life middle age so some are purple and gold flecked gray so gold flecked gray meanings a lot of gold okay so underline that some are purple and uh, golden for she who has journeyed through her life midway whose hands have cherished whose love has blessed and cradled fair sons on her faithful breast and serves her household in f- fruitful pride and worships the god at her husband's side so over here the next journey in a woman's life this is the last journey that sarojini naidu was talking about and we are talking about the middle age stage of a woman's life so over here the bangles are purple and golden color and for she who has journeyed through life midway as in you have finished almost half or more than half of your life say 60 to 70% of your life is over now because you are a middle aged woman for hands for hands who have ch- have cherished whose love has blessed so as in when you are middle aged definitely in most cases the woman will be a mom by now right and those the mom the mom's hands have blessed so many people have blessed their son their daughters all of them so their the woman's hands have cherished a lot of moments and also loved a lot of people and blessed a lot of people and cradle fair son so over here since i said that this story was 
written before independence. A little racism is brought on over here when we say fair sons and not daughters because this was before independence and as I said a lot of people that time they only wanted sons not daughters which is a very very rude thing to do or say. I agree with that 100% so don't mind it. It was written before independence and that's why sons is used right and cradled fair sons on her faithful breast as in she has bought up uh, fair sons on her faithful breast faithful breast as in mother's love mother's milk and mother's feeding right and serves her house household in fruitful pride as in a mother has that pride in her that these are my sons these are my this is my child this is my daughter and uh, she has that pride when she serves her household and she worships the gods at her husband's side now fourth stanza basically talks about you know colors like purple gray golden all of these they represent a middle aged woman who has journeyed throughout her life and this was also the deeper meaning behind the paragraph okay so with this we completely come to an end to this poem i hope you all understood each and everything i know this poem took a, a little more longer because considering that there is there is a lot of uh, deep meaning and you know this poem talks a lot about uh, imagery and bangles and to understand a few things it takes a little more time so i'm very very sorry because i ho held you up held all of you up for a long long time but just wait for <laughs> a little more time because we just quickly talk about you know the theme of the poem and what the bangle sellers is basically about okay so i'm talking about the theme of the poem the theme of the poem is patriarchy and womanhood so the poet has not directly referred to the role and the dominance of males in a woman's life but there is enough hints of patriarchal setup in the poem a man as father a husband all of that so we see the patriarchy that is seen so when we talk about fair sons and everything sarojini naidu has actually done on purpose done that on purpose because we see that how much patriarchy we ha have around our world and the racism that we have around our world uh, the poet has not directly referred to the role and the dominance of males in a woman's life but there are enough hints of patriarchal setup in the poem a man as father a husband a son plays an important role in every stage of her life the last four lines have been criticized as a tactic approval of a patriarchal ideology of a woman poet and it has been criticized because it just talks about how a mother she serves as you know household and all of that so it talks about a certain patriarchy and by using fair sons the poet has only upheld the gender discrimination in indian families and the last line line shows too that the woman prays and worships the god for her husband the husband won't do it do it herself she is the one that has to do it on behalf of the husband so it really shows like the patriarchy that was there back in the day and it also talks about womanhood as we all know i don't think so i have to explain further on that because womanhood why because it celebrates it doesn't celebrate womanhood but it basically just talks about womanhood you know how bangle is a very important uh, part in a a woman's life and how it represents a woman basically and some literacy or poetry devices that have been used are normally similes because a lot of silver blue as the mountain mist all of that has been used and also metaphors okay metaphors for bangles when they say uh, rainbow tinted circles of uh, light then metaphor for bundles of shining bangles as in shining loads and also flush like buds that dream basically that so with this we come to an end of the complete poem chapter whatever you want to call it hope you all understood everything like share subscribe to fikrnaw.com if this video was any help to you at all all right and stay tuned for upcoming videos and suggest down you know comment down below if you have any doubts and also suggestions for new chapters that i can take up for all of you until that bye